As DeepSeek drops another model with very little fanfare, people are starting to ask, is China actually outperforming the US on artificial intelligence? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are talking about one of the big themes dominating the conversation around AI in 2025, which is of course about China outcompeting the US. We have right now a new model from DeepSeek, new high-performance chips, and leading AI scientists returning to China. People are starting to ask with a straight face, is China pulling ahead on AI? Right now, we have seen very few actual AI policies when it comes to the new Trump administration, at least beyond getting out of the way and letting AI companies build. To the extent that there is any one clear policy goal, it's that China must not win the AI race. The release of DeepSeek R1 triggered a reckoning in Washington, with policymakers, and everyone else, frankly, being forced to grapple with the idea that China was catching up. The event was pivotal enough that Mark Andreessen called it AI Sputnik moment. And now, just a few months later, it's starting to look like China has, if not taken the lead, at least seems to be moving at a much quicker pace than US competitors. If DeepSeek was a wake-up call in the West, it was a bona fide phenomenon in China. The interviewing months have been filled with adoption stories in what appeared to be a nationwide push to integrate DeepSeek into absolutely everything. So what are the latest stories that have this conversation picking up heat again today? The first is that we've gotten a new DeepSeek model, their V3 Foundation model. This open source model was launched unceremoniously on Hugging Face yesterday without any form of announcement. The release even came with a completely empty readme file, just model weights and a commercial use license. Benchmarks showed improved capabilities in reasoning and coding. Ziafon wrote, Tested the new DeepSeek V3 on my internal bench, and it has a huge jump in all metrics on all tests. It is now the best non-reasoning model, dethroning Sonnet 3.5. This is an important point, too, as people get a little bit hysterical right now. This is not DeepSeek's next reasoning model, which presumably will be called R2 and is something that people are waiting for with bated breath. But even without that, what's really grabbing headlines is a big boost to efficiency and speed. Apple machine learning researcher Auni Hannon tested the model on his 512GB M3 Ultra Max Studio and had it running at 20 tokens per second. Admittedly, this is only in 4-bit mode and the $9,500 Apple computer isn't quite consumer-grade hardware, but it is still a 685 billion parameter state-of-the-art model running on hardware that costs less than a cheap used car. VentureBeat writes, This represents a potentially significant shift in AI deployment. While traditional AI infrastructure typically relies on multiple NVIDIA GPUs consuming several kilowatts of power, the Mac Studio draws less than 200 watts during inference. The efficiency gap suggests the AI industry may need to rethink assumptions about infrastructure requirements for top-tier model performance. VentureBeat's reporting also honed in on the difference in AI strategy between the East and the West. They noted that US leaders like OpenAI and Anthropic have kept their models behind paywalls, while the Chinese approach has been to open source as much as possible, writing, This approach is rapidly transforming China's AI ecosystem. The open availability of cutting-edge models creates a multiplier effect, enabling startups, researchers, and developers to build upon sophisticated AI technology without massive capital expenditure. This has accelerated China's AI capabilities at a pace that has shocked Western observers. They added, This philosophy is rapidly closing the perceived AI gap between China and the United States. Just months ago, most analysts estimated China lagged one to two years behind US AI capabilities. Today, that gap has narrowed dramatically to perhaps three to six months, with some areas approaching parity or even Chinese leadership. And indeed, if DeepSeek follows their previous release pattern, we could see a new version of their reasoning model within the next few weeks. Certainly, the rumor mill is up and running, with SmokeAway spreading the rumor that DeepSeek R2 has scored 90% on the ArcAGI benchmark, which would beat OpenAI's O3 score of 87%. Chubby writes, this would be absolutely nuts and would catapult China. If this is true, I don't see any way how closed source is going to win the AI race. Now, many pointed out, however, that this is a rumor with literally no sourcing and is highly unlikely to be true, But at the same time, the resonance of this rumor is perhaps the story in terms of just how fast attitudes are shifting about where China sits in the AI race more broadly. On the chip front, China also seems to be catching up. Bloomberg reports that Alibaba parent company Ant Group has developed a technique to cut training costs by 20% using Huawei's AI chips. The firm has adopted a mixture of experts architecture, which is the same architecture used by DeepSeek. However, the big news is that Ant Group saw these results on training runs using NVIDIA's H800 chips which are the downrated chips designed to comply with export controls. This suggests that Huawei's chips can substitute for US GPUs if necessary, and export controls aren't a major impediment to advanced model training. Ant Group laid out their process in a research paper earlier this month, which highlighted their goal of scaling a frontier LLM without using premium GPUs. They said it cost around $880,000 to train a trillion token model on high-performance hardware, 
they expected to cut that down to $700,000 on lower spec hardware using their method. Robert Lee, a senior Bloomberg analyst, said, Ant Group's paper highlights the rising innovation and accelerating pace of technological progress in China's AI sector. The firm's claim highlights China is well on the way to becoming self-sufficient in AI as the country turns to lower-cost, computationally efficient models to work around the export controls on NVIDIA chips. Former quant investor Jeffrey Emanuel commented, Well, that didn't take too long. These Huawei AI training chips are barely on the radar of U.S. companies and stock market investors, but they really should be if well over 40% of NVIDIA's true sales come from China, including Singapore and Vietnam because of smuggling. Huawei is, however, on the radar of NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang. In remarks last week, he said, Huawei is the single most formidable technology company in China. They have conquered every market they've engaged. I think their presence in AI is growing every single year. We can't assume they are not going to be a factor. The other dimension of China-U.S. competition taking a troubling turn is the struggle to retain talent. Earlier this month, a Republican bill to ban Chinese students made waves, with many believing that such a move would stifle the talent pipeline. Still, perhaps an even more pressing issue is that some of the leading Chinese AI scientists are starting to self-deport. 43-year-old former Microsoft researcher Guo Junqi has joined the Westlake University in Hangzhou after a decade-long career in the U.S. During that time, he was chief AI scientist at Huawei Research USA and also won several prestigious awards, including the Microsoft Fellowship, the IBM Fellowship, and the award for best paper at the Association of Computing Machinery's International Conference on Multimedia. She said, I was drawn to the free-spirited atmosphere at Westlake University and wanted to come back and pursue something I truly wanted to do. A China-based British medical AI researcher going by Luke commented, Big AI news in China. Dr. Chi is an absolute legend in AI, who worked in the U.S. for 10 years, has decided to come back to China. For him to leave the States and head to China has to be a huge wake-up call for AI research friends. And while the rest of the post kind of reads like a CCP plant account, the resonance of these posts is once again part of the story. Dai WW, identifying only as a Chinese national interested in geopolitics, posted, The American AI industry is now facing a dilemma. If it doesn't use Chinese engineers, its AI will fall behind China's. If it uses Chinese engineers, they will return to China. Now, while one could assume that this was a political move to recall a top AI researcher and generate fodder for propaganda, even if that's the case, the contest for talent is still real. As of 2022, China trained 47% of the world's top quintile AI undergrads. The U.S. graduated around 18%. Liberal commentator Matt Iglesias wrote, Nobody wants to hear it, but it's hard for America to have more people than China working on AI or batteries or drones or any other key field, as long as there are four times as many Chinese as Americans. You need an abundance of people. Ultimately, the question of whether China is in the lead or merely catching up is secondary to the point that the entire tenor of the contest has changed in just a few short months. Much reporting suggests that open source and wide-scale AI deployment are now official government policy. And while we're not quite at the stage where Chinese models are being pushed abroad in a digital Belt and Road initiative, many in Washington believe that that could be the next step. Investor Balaji Srinivasan wrote a long thread on what he sees happening. He called it AI overproduction and wrote, China seeks to commoditize their complements. So, over the following months, I expect a complete blitz of Chinese open source AI models for everything from computer vision to robotics to image generation. Why? I'm just inferring this from public statements, but their apparent goal is to take the profit out of AI software since they make money on AI enabled hardware. Basically, they want to do to US tech the last stronghold what they already did to US manufacturing namely, copy it, optimize it, scale it, and then wreck the Western original with low prices. China thinks it has the opportunity to hit U.S. tech companies, boost its prestige, help its internal economy, and take the margins out of AI software globally, at least at the model level. I don't know if they'll succeed at the app layer, but it could be hard for closed-source AI model developers to recoup the high fixed costs associated with training state-of-the-art models when great open-source models are available. I agree that it's surprising that the country of the Great Firewall is suddenly the country of open-source AI, but it is consistent in a different way, which is that China is just focused on doing whatever it takes to win even to the point of copying partially abandoned Western values like open source, which seem to be the hardest thing to adopt. And when it comes to this idea of China doing anything to win, that's basically the point that Morgan Stanley analysts are making as well. They write, DeepSeek's emergence is more than just an AI milestone. It's a timely symbol of China's ambition to claim a leadership role in the tech revolution. Beyond financial markets, DeepSeek's emergence comes at a moment of national pride. The box office triumph of Nijia 2 and video game black myth Wukong have given rise to a grassroots confidence rather than a top-down directive from Beijing, reinforcing newfound belief in national identity and tradition. Kaifu Li, the founder of Chinese startup 01.ai, is just about ready to claim the lead, stating, Previously, I think it was a six- to nine-month gap and behind in everything, and now I think that's probably three months behind in some of the core technologies, but actually ahead in some specific areas. He argued that U.S. export controls had been a double-edged sword, forcing innovation to speed up in China, saying, the fact that DeepSeek are able to figure out the chain of thought with a new way to do reinforcement learning is either catching up with the U.S. learning quickly or maybe even more innovative now. So as to this question of is China ahead, 
I think in practical terms, the answer remains no. Bindu Reddy writes, A myth is floating around that China is ahead of the US in AI. No, it's not. Here are the best models. Reasoner 01, Coder Sonnet 3.7, Instruct Model GPT 4.5, OCR Gemini Flash, Real-Time Grok 3, Video VO, Image Flux Ultra. Zero of these models are from China. Almost all of them are from the US. Sure, China has good open source models, but they're used by less than 1% in the real world. I think that's kind of cold comfort, though. What people are watching isn't the static analysis of where things are right now. What they're watching is the trend lines. Right now, the vibe is that China is outcompeting the US when it comes to AI. And even if they haven't superseded the state of the art, that's the trend line they're on. What's more, who's to say that the only thing that matters in the AI competition is owning the state of the art? Bindu writes that they're used by less than 1% in the real world, but that could change fast if China can totally change the cost profile and evangelize their own models. There are going to be lots and lots of applications of AI that are fine with the quote-unquote good enough thing that's just 5-10% to worse than whatever the leading version is. Anyways, this continues to be a fascinating dimension of this story. It certainly adds an extra layer of dynamism to the whole space. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching, as always, and until next time, peace.